right, everybody, we're live right here at the Hattie Mae White Building. I got Mr. Ronnie Branch, who's uh, Jack J. Smith of Valley President, and I also got Mr. Gary Monroe. Uh, and we're here, uh, and I'm going to just let you and Ronnie, uh, Gary, uh, talk. I'm going to let Ronnie hold the mic to, to you so we can talk about it. It, it, it won't. You okay. have to go there. It'll go. Now, Monroe, you and Ronnie... And Ronnie being over this, he need to find out why Miss Guillory was released. Uh, what the deal is? Is they going to, to reinstate her job, or are they going to officially let her go? At, at this point, we got to save her career. She's not coming back to Yates. They're not going to let her. They're, they're not going to do it. They did it to they did it to the Cashmere principal when they removed when they removed him, and he won his case, but they wouldn't send him back to Cashmere. I want y'all to think about something. They done, they done fast-tracked Tiffany Guillory in three weeks to be terminated. But the Bel Air baseball coach is still sitting at the warehouse nine months later. Why is it so important to get her off that campus that fast? Because they need this school to fail. The plan is to make sure we have some sacrificial lambs to throw on a plate for TEA because they think that TEA is going to win the lawsuit against HISD. So they need some schools to throw out there as the bait. And, and I'm gonna be honest with y'all, man. I'm built a little bit differently. When Guillory got that job, I told Guillory, I said, I'll ride with you till the wheels fall off. As long as she didn't do anything wrong, I'm gonna stand up for it. And that's the promise I made Coach McGowan before he died. The promise was, you take care of this school. So those that got a problem with the way that I'm doing it, talk to God, he gave me the assignment. He didn't tell me how to do it. So, you know, the bottom line is Millard House is not good for kids. Black, white, Latino, special ed, whatever. He's not good for kids. Last year, and I talked to Miss Guillory, I asked her, how much money did you get for tutoring? Well, they got $1.6 billion in ESSA funds, federal COVID money. And on the, on the uh, dashboard, it says that Yates received 213000 Guillory say that's a damn lie, Monroe. She didn't get nothing. They spent three million dollars on water bottles. Well, you didn't spend no water. You ain't buying no water at Yates because we took care of our kids. You see what I'm saying? So all they doing is they're running through all that federal money, and and I I found some things, and I, I I'm I'm gonna have a Charleston White moment for a second because I done already snitched on them to the feds. I brought my laptop, I showed them what they needed to see, and I told them, man, go get these clowns, man. So Millet House was sent here to destroy our school district. But I, I told him when he first got here, Mr. Branch, don't come down to 3650 Alabama with your foolishness, man. He chose to do it. And when they decided they were gonna let Guillory go, Millet House was sitting in our gym watching a basketball game so you know my wife like what what does that mean i say what he did is he flexed on us he did it in a way to make all of us see i fired her and i'm sitting on your campus and ain't nothing you can do about it but he done barked up the wrong tree this time I've been quiet for a few years. I've oh, been no, real let quiet. Let me ask you this. Where did, where did Milhouse come from? What, uh, what, what kind of background do he have to see that why they got rid of Miss... Uh, Miss Guillory. Uh, not only Miss Guillory, I'm talking about Dr. Layton, who was an intern superintendent. I mean, that's when it all kind of started. And I'm right or wrong, Monroe? I mean, they, they didn't want Layton to be the permanent because Layton wouldn't play the games. She didn't want to be involved with all the illegal stuff. She just wanted to run the school district. And I think when Latham was here, black kids got more support, financial support, than, than, than this guy. I, the only thing I can tell anybody, show me something he's done for black kids. In 18 months. What, what is Mule House from? He's from Clarksville. Well, actually, he started off in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where he was a part of an administration that closed 11 schools. He moved over to Clarksville, Tennessee, his mentor is Peter Gorman, and Peter Gorman and Denise Watts, who works in HISD, were in Charlotte Mecklenburg, where they closed 11 schools. So all these people are connected at the hips. So, and, so in other words, he got a reputation of closing schools. Exactly. 
Exactly. That's why they bought him in here. They actually because it was he is because this is the way I'm getting it, Monroe. Because this is bigger than the HSD. This is about the state of Texas. They got yeah. exactly seven black schools to still open, and they want these schools closed. They want them closed. I mean, they, this is Armageddon for us. This five is, of them coming from Houston. But this is what you know we've been hearing about since I was a student at Yates. How they want to close the school and yeah. and different things. But now it's plain to see what they're doing. And I mean the disrespect. The reason a lot of us are coming here tonight is the disrespect for the black community. They don't feel like they have to answer to us at all. They don't feel like they have to tell us anything that they do. But at the end of the day, it's our tax money that they're pissing away in here. Right. Well, see, the thing the thing that I know for a fact is starting in 1968 when integration started, there was a move starting in 1968 to do away with Yates so the University of Houston could get that property. And they've been trying and trying and trying. And what they did was they start slowly taking away the things that Yates had, like uh, uh, wood shop, electronical shop. Uh, uh, cleaning and you know, Cleaning and pressing was the last thing. But now I say, if you have a kid that wants to know about cleaning, wants to think about cleaning and pressure, maybe one day opening his shop. But if he don't have it, that the school doesn't have it at Yates, but they have it over there, then he's going to go over there. And so they slowly, the, the, the enrollment slowly goes down and they go to these other schools. And that way Yates is not the school it used to be. Because, I mean, we we all know what Yates used to be. Yates was, the, was, was ahead in everything. Now all of a sudden, we're not. And we can't we can't get enough people for the band. We can't get enough people for the football team. You know, it's just it's. I mean, we got people for the football team, but what I'm saying, we don't have schools that are feed into Yates like they used to. Well, we don't have no middle school. You know, number one, they, they closed down uh, Ryan Junior High School, middle Mill school. Miller. They closed down Miller Junior High School, and the few few people that's going out of color, most some of them are going out to Worthing. Am I right or wrong, Mr. Monroe? I mean, they going to Worthing, they going to Bel Air, they going to Lamar, they going to Marshall. I mean, they going to schools that got something to offer them. I mean, I, I, I've been at war forever, man, and for a long time, I've never seen this happen before. But the, like the whole half of month of December and half of January, Yates and Cullen didn't have a principal at the same time. The people that, 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 that the, the, the SDMC wanted at Cullen, that's not who they put in there. So what I'm hearing, they want to put a guy from Cashmere in Yates. Well, why that don't work for me? Why would I want somebody coming from a failing school? That don't make sense. They need a robot. They need somebody to complete their assignment. Yeah. And a lot of people did not realize that Rick Cruz, the deputy superintendent, is mentored by Terry Greer himself. Wow. He's finishing he's finishing what Terry Greer started. And who is Terry Greer? The former superintendent that decimated HISD and fired how many teachers, Larry? 900. So guess what happens next year? When the federal COVID money is gone, we will be $217 million in the deficit. So what happens to the teachers? What you gonna do with the schools? You don't have enough money to run them. The only way we can survive this, we gotta get rid of this dude. Well, he came here to destroy these schools. His reputation, his MO is to destroy all the black schools. Am I right? That 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 is his mo. But I've already asked him, man. I've sent word to him. Do you know Lucifer? I don't know if he ever answered because you' about to meet him playing with me with Yates. Okay. Well, well I was talking to Booley when we were over, coming over here, and uh, maybe I'm, you can in, enlighten me. Why is it we don't seem to get the backing from the black members on the school board? Because they're too political. They they answer to other people, they answer to Rodney, they answer to Boris. You know, these people, you got people that work for these people in real life. So you don't hear Boris saying nothing and he's a Yates lion. You don't hear Sheila Jackson Lee's husband saying nothing, he's a Yates lion. They're not gonna say nothing because they will profit off of any black school that is turned into a charter school. That's what they'll do. 
and they hate when I say it in public, but I, I can't hide it anymore. So what you're saying for everybody to know is that they're trying to do away with these schools and make them charter schools. No doubt. They, 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 they would rather, if they can sell a land, that's a win for them. And that's something that House them did in the other cities they were in. They came up with this plan where we could sell the land and sell the building and we could make money to give back to the teachers. That's a part of their formula. But down here, they would rather just turn them into charter schools. And I mean, the new Yates is cool, but it's really a middle school. It's built like a middle school. So what they tell you, you got a high school down the street on the old Lockhart property, you need a middle school. That's the energy school. That That's the got. energy high school. Right. But the man lied at a community meeting at the energy high school. I asked him and Marie Celestine asked him, this was in early November, are you going to move Guillory from Yates? He told us, I don't have any knowledge of wanting to move Tiffany Guillory. So tonight I'm gonna call him a lie in his face. Because that's what you did, bruh. And now you have, you've upset the apple cart. Those kids are demoralized down there. They're demoralized at their school, man. I mean, the kids are reaching out to her and she's very emotional, her mom has cancer. And she's stressed out and ended up in the hospital and all this since this went on. And, and it's not fair that somebody gives you almost 30 years of their life and then you just wake up one morning and say to hell with him. But the way he did it, he disrespected our legacy. The way he did it, sitting in that gym while it was being done. It's nah. that problem. Millard House has 11,000 employees. The board has one. You can't get one employee in line. If you're in there for the right reasons, you're gonna do what's right. But if you're not in there for the right reasons, you're going to find every excuse why you can't get something done. I told him when I was running for school board, I said, man, you better be, you better pray I don't win. He said, why? Because I'm going to require you to do your job. And when you don't do it, I'm going to be the first one in closed session screaming we need to buy him out. Is it cheaper to buy him out at this point? Yeah, we might end up paying him close to a million dollars. But that's cheaper than 217 million in the deficit next year. Because that's it. Next year we won't have this COVID money. It's gone. It's just gone. Well, explain to people about about the COVID money so they can understand that. It, it, it's a grant that they got. Uh, and they got them all over the country where they, they provided X amount of dollars to these school districts to to deal with the loss of learning that those kids dealt with during the COVID-19 pandemic. So the money is not making it down to the schools. It, it's all in here. So, you know, they're creating different positions and and, and, and and they're taking care of themselves in here. You know, like at Yates, I know y'all heard me screaming all football season. They, they couldn't get the, the new football coach money right. But I bet you nobody money and that was messed up. You see what I'm saying? So the bottom line is, Millard House may be a great person. I don't want to know him as a person. I need you to superintendent. I don't want a personal relationship with you. I need you to do what you're supposed to do. But as we saw a couple of weeks ago, if y'all didn't know, he got caught on tape because he ran out to the white community because they were upset and they backdoored him and recorded the conversation. And you basically said that you were in bed with T.E.A. So, and when it's all said and done, and, 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 and come on over here, man. Bring my man over here, man. Keep Downing from Cashmere, man. How you doing, Ronnie Brown? How you doing? Keep Downing, man. We, we, we cannot doing? allow these people to come in here from out of state. And I, I tell y'all a unique story. A few years back, and I had never met this man a day in my life, Gary Dunham was let go from Cashmere High School. But I know Coach Dunham was a legend. He was back in them days with Luther Book and all them guys. And when I found out, I called Andre Walker. I don't know how you gonna fix this, but you better get him back in that school. Because that's not how you treat people that have given their life to this school district. But where we are right now, they tried to only divide and conquer with us. 
about two weeks ago called in three of our people and and, and, and tried to tell them, no, it ain't this, it ain't that. And and then I told them once they did, I said, I told y'all don't talk to them people unless we all talk to them people. We all need to, he needs to face all of us. Well, they went right back and did what I told them they were going to do. Walking around this building because I hear everything. Oh, the Yates community supports what we're doing. Well, we're going to find out tonight because I don't think they're showing up to support your foolishness. These people are not right. And where we are right now, I don't care what black school it is, they're under attack. And if we don't get this dude up out of here, we are going to lose our black schools. You'll lose them before you lose your school district. Well, I need to ask Keith. Keith, what ever happened uh, to the principal over there at Cashmere? What's his name, Brian? Uh, Who's that? Uh, that he was the principal over there uh, two years ago. Uh, no, you're talking about uh, Bush. Mr. Bush. Reginald Bush. Uh -huh. Reginald Bush. Yeah, what happened to him? He's going to Illinois. No, Bush still you. No, Bush still in town? Yeah. Okay, I thought this he had gone to Illinois. what they did to Bush. Bush got promoted to an SSO. Then they tried to backdoor him. Bush had to fight for his job. They kept him out by six, seven months. Bush gets his job back, but they don't put him in the SSO position. They sent him to an elementary school. And the rumor was he was going to Madison. They wasn't going to let him go. So that's why I'm telling people we're fighting for Tiffany's Guillory's, mm -hmm. just you know, not just her, but the rest of these principals, but Guillory's career at this point. You see what I'm saying? Like Sterling, they got a plan for Sterling. What's the plan? Jones been closed how many years? All of a sudden, Sterling got too many kids. So now they want to reopen Jones. So where you gonna get the kids from? They gonna take half the population from Sterling. So now you're going to have two unenrolled high schools. Unless they can call me a lie. And they've not been able to do it yet. Those are the things that they are doing. Right now, because I'm glad Keith, and it's crazy Keith walked up here. What did I say before Keith walked up here? They doing the same thing to his principal that they did to Guillory. Is that right, Keith? CCMR. Yep. Points. How many we lose, Ken? 42? 42. 42. Mm-hmm. Three schools, these three schools had a no rating. It was Gates, Cashmere, Forest Brook. Yep. Of all the schools on the list. And what we cannot overlook is because you don't like the messenger, don't overlook the message. Exactly. Right. And the message is we have to stand in solidarity for our schools and our students. Everybody's not going to college. Right, right. These are the people that will make up these communities. We've made up these communities, and the ones behind us will make up these communities. And we can't have lawlessness because of lack of education in our communities. Right, right. That's, that's well said. And that's what we're going to end up with if you, because a lot of these kids are not going across town. And if you got, if you got, if you got, if you got equity and you have equality, then come to our side of town and go to school. We always got to go to the other side of town. Of course, that's traditional since, since the 60s and since busing. But the fact of the matter is that we have to stand together in solidarity with all our schools. So goes one, so goes me, so goes you. Exactly. Well, like I said, it, it started in 1968. This is not something new. When you take everything from these black schools and give it to the white schools, then the black, the black students who want the things that they used to have, that they have at the white school, that's where they're going to go. And that cuts down on the student population. Every, like you said, everybody's not going to go to college. That's where the trades come in. Mm -hmm. But if, 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 there's, if they're not, those trades are not at the black school, then the kids will say, well, okay, I want to I be able to do this. Well, I'm, it's available at this white school. I'm going to go to that white school. Well, right now what we got is we got an invasion of out-of-towners. We got a whole bunch of people in there from Chicago, a whole bunch of people from Baltimore, a whole bunch of people from Carolina. Hold on, hold on a second, man. Ain't all them school districts jacked up? All of them messed up. But now they done came here and they experts at what they do. But wherever you were, you failed. You failed. We got too many people that don't understand the tradition of Cashmere, don't understand the tradition of Yates and Sterling.
They don't care anything about us. They just do what they do, pack their stuff, and they move on. But like Keith just said, no, nah, you come for cashmere from now on, I'm strapping up the crimson and gold, and I'm going to cashmere garden and we can get on. But ain't no more, ain't no more sitting quiet. Ain't no more sitting quiet. See, Malcolm warned us. But see, a lot of people didn't want to listen to Malcolm. Because, you know, he was who he was. Millen House is exactly what Malcolm described. A professional Negro. He looks like us. He dressed like us. He even talks like us. But he's not us. And this is what we got to get rid of. I don't believe that a child should have to get on a bus in Cashmere Garden or Third Ward and go to Barbara Jordan to take cosmetology. I believe that should be in our schools. It's in everybody else's school. And unless we stand up and demand it at this point, say it is what it is. I know we got some nice looking black men that's dressed nice tonight. They got some crazy little white women finna show up here, bro. And if they got to shut this thing down, they gonna shut it down tonight, man. Because enough is enough. He's had 18 months. Keith, you've been in corporate America, Ronnie. You've been in corporate America. I've been in corporate America. John, all of us. You don't get 18 months to do your job. No, sir. No. He's had 18 months, and unless he can show each one of us one thing, not five, not three, show me one thing that you've done for black children in 18 months. Nothing. He's done nothing for our children. But more importantly, he's done nothing for none of them. Right. This is this a power move. This is all a power move. A student graduated from Cashmere years ago made a, made a statement in my, I was taking her to uh, work for Solutions. Um, and she asked a question. She said, uh, why do I have to leave my community to get a quality education and to get a job? Why don't I have these things in my community? When others living in other communities don't have to leave their community to, to get, uh, uh, earn a living and to get an education. That she said, I can't understand that. She aspired to go to University of Oregon from Cashmere High, ended up at University of Oregon. Coming out of TSU, she went straight to TSU, then Oregon, but the fact is she came back here she said, I want to help my community because I find out they, they, they wash clothes differently somewhere else. They do. Mm-hmm. They do. And so that's important that we understand maybe you don't have a child that goes to school in HISD or any one of these school districts, but they're all our children.